You'd do anything to save Margot's life, wouldn't you, Tony? Of course. Even if it meant going to prison several years yourself? I'd do absolutely anything. But I think there's something we can do if you tell the police the right story. The right story? I've been working this out. You go to the police and you tell them you hired this man to murder your wife. What are you talking about? Listen. I've been writing this stuff for years. I know what I'm talking about. Sit down. Now that the man is dead, you can say anything you like. You can say you worked out the whole thing together. That you never saw him at Victoria Station. It was an invention of yours just to connect him with the letter. But the letter was found in the dead man's pocket. Because you put it there. You found out who was writing to her. And you were so devastated that you just went over the edge. No, they, they take it exactly with what it is. A husband desperately trying to save his wife. So where's a try, Tony? We've got to do something. Tomorrow's the execution. Look, look, if there's the slightest chance of this coming off, of course I'd do it. But it has to be convincing. I, and whatever story I tell the police, you'll have to come with me. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Promise. I couldn't do that. They know the kind of stuff I write. If they suspected we'd talked, they wouldn't listen. Good afternoon, Mr. Wenders. Is uh, this about my wife? N no. No, I'm afraid not. Uh, may I? What is it, then? Oh, it's uh, just a question or two. I'm making some inquiries into a burglary that took place some oh, three weeks ago. Just can't this wait just a few more days, Inspector? Oh, uh, believe me, sir, I do fully appreciate your position. If I may, I, I would like to say how deeply sorry yeah, I am. It's all right, all right, anyway. Thank you, thank you, Inspector. How can I help? Um, we've been on the lookout for an embezzler, sir, who recently met off with several hundred pounds. And in uh, checking with the Wales garage, is that right? Uh, we note that you settled an account there recently for 200 pounds. Yeah. Uh, uh, you paid in cash. Yes, I happened to have rough, quite a lot of money on me at the time. Well, you just come from your bank, sir? Have you been to my bank, Inspector? Well, as a matter of fact, I have, yes. <laughs> it wouldn't help me very much, though. Bank statements always jealously guarded. Oh, yes, uh, Where did you get it, sir? Is that any of your business? Well, uh, yes, if it's stolen money, it's very much my business. You see, if you got that money from somebody you didn't know, that might be the very person we've been looking for. Oh, hello. Sir. Is that yours, sir? Well, what is it? It's a latchkey lying on the floor here. No, all right. No, I've got mine right here. Hi. Oh, not yours. Oh, must be mine then. Oh, look at that, sir. You've got a hole right through my pocket. <laughs> That's the worst of these latch keys. They all look alike, don't they? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. You were saying. Uh, I, I don't think I was. No. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, the, the money, yes. Um, would you mind telling me where you got it, sir? 300 pounds is yeah. rather a lot to be going about with. I thought, I thought you said 200 pounds a moment ago. Did I? Well, yes, you're quite right. I did. Um, yes. Yes, my sergeant said that you also paid a tailor's bill and a wine shop in cash. Well, that's easily explained. I simply won rather a large amount at the dog races. Well, you mean several hundred pounds? Yes. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me straight away? Well, because I, I was a little ashamed to be caught going to the dog races when my wife is under sentence of death. I understand, sir. It keeps your mind off things. I'm I'm very, very sorry to no. have to come and no, bother right. you like this. Right. So, <clears throat> oh, yeah, there was just one other thing, sir. Um, do you happen to have got a small blue attache case? Don't say you found that already. Why, have you lost it? Yes. Uh, I was going to report it this afternoon. I, I left it in a taxi. Oh. How do you know about that attaché case, Inspector? Oh, the wine shop noticed it when you paid your bill. As a matter of fact, the tailor in the garage remembered it, too. 
That's remarkable. You say I use it instead of a briefcase. Ah, oh, well, these taxi men are pretty good at handing things in. I hope you get it back. All right. Is this what you're looking for, Inspector? Well, Mr. Halliday. Where, where did you find... There's a key, Tony? You gone mad? Find some way to open it. You no, know, just a minute. So, you know, why did you tell me you'd left it in the taxi? Well, I, I, I thought I had. You see, I have two small attaché cases, Inspector, and, and one of them, though, the one I, th I thought we were talking about. Don't be a fool. Max! I've got a key somewhere. What the hell is all this? Get to another one. Must be more than 3,000 pounds there. Where did you get it, sir? I can tell you why he got it. This is the money to have been paid Swan after he murdered Margot in this room. But as we all know, there was an accident. So he didn't have to pay Swan after all. And he's been living on it ever since. Well, Mr. Wendis? What's the matter, Tony? Just a little while ago, you said you'd do anything to save Margot's life. What changed your mind? Would you believe this, Inspector? But before you arrived, he was trying to get me to go to the police and tell them the most fantastic story about my bribing Swan to murder my wife so that I could inherit her money. Supposedly, I was the one who stole Max's letter and wrote the blackmail notes. You did? 